This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere, or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio Welcome to the X-Zone A place where fact is fiction And fiction is reality Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell And welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Exxon Broadcast Network and our growing family of broadcast affiliates and satellite programming providers right around this great big world of ours and into the great beyond. If you'd like to send me an email, studio at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And our main website where you can find out what we've been up to, what we're doing, and where we will be in the future at www.xzoneradiotv.com. First of all, to each and every one of you, the very merriest Christmas of uh, 2017. I hope that you all had a great time with your families and that, you know, everybody is sick and tired of turkey by now. And uh, here we're going, we're looking into 2017, and I really believe that the year 2017 is going to be a great year on all fronts. For example, the new political family in the United States, great things to look forward to. Uh, apparently, the economy is going to be great. A lot of people believe that this is going to be a year of peace, tranquility, and a revival. And I believe that this year is going to be a closer step forward to, for once and for all, getting either the proof that there is or there is not extraterrestrials. Well, you know, my guest this hour is a good friend of mine, Jose Escamilla. And um, I had the pleasure of meeting Jose many years ago, uh, talking about the Roswell Rods. Jose sent me a video. I looked at it, and I said, you got to be kidding. And what we thought we'd do is have Jose on today because he's he's got an exciting project that I that we want each and every one of you to take part in. But right now, first of all, Jose, to you and your family, Feliz Navidad, Merry Christmas, my friend, and and the best of the New Year to you. Thank you, sir. Best of all to you too, Jose. For our many listeners who are listening to you for the first time tonight on our new networks, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell them about yourself. Okay, well, you know, um, I'm, I grew up in Roswell, New Mexico, and um, 
I, I, I was a rock and roller back in the 60s, and I had my first UFO encounter coming out of, uh, after playing a prom at my hometown where I was born. I was born in Loving, New Mexico, which is near Carlsbad, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And we were coming out of there. We were going through Carlsbad, and there was a, there was a highway there that goes into this old fossil riverbed. And this UFO flew right over us, man. We saw it in the sky. It looked like a, a, a light aircraft that was going to crash, and it leveled out far away, and then it went right above us. We had parked uh, at the bottom of the hill there, and there was a semi-truck, and then there was a station wagon with a family. And this thing was about, man, it was about 30 feet in diameter, flew right above us so low that I jumped up and tried to touch the bottom of it. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it happened in 1966, and so... Um, after that, we we were drowsy for the next three days, and we, then we just forgot about the event. But mm -hmm. I remember it vividly, man. And so does my bass player and uh, our drummer and his dad. Uh, they all witnessed it, and so did the family. So that was the first time I'd ever seen or experienced a UFO. But it was incredible, man. It made no noise, and uh, it just took off straight up after it flew right over us. <clears throat> and, you know, and over the years, living in Roswell, I saw a lot of things. I mean, I used to hang out with a band at this hotel in Roswell called Fuji Hotel. And we'd hang out at the swimming pool, you know, and just lay out. And uh, uh, up in the sky, we could see flying saucers, man. They were playing up in the clouds, man. It was just it was an amazing thing. But, you know, I was a rock and roller, and I, I didn't think much of it. I'd go, mm -hmm. oh, wow, there they are, you know, what that's <laughs> cool, you know. But um, in 1994, after the Northridge earthquake, um, I went home to visit with my mom and my sister, and uh, we had a premiere of the film that I had edited. I was working with Jack Chrysler and uh, Michael Mann, and I was editing this film. All right, what That's we're going to do, Jose, we're going to do a bit of a cliffhanger because I've got to take my hard break here. Exo oh, Nation, yes, yes. Jose Escamilla is our very special guest. Jose, give our listeners your website. Yes, it's... Uh, www.tblnfilms.com That's T as in Tom, B as in Bob, L as in Larry, N as in Nancy, films.com. And Jose and I will be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I'm Rob McConnell. Don't go away. Network broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN TV. For more information on the X Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. How would you like to be able to read other people's minds? Well, the next best thing is here. When you know how to read a person's name, you know how the person thinks, feels, and behaves. Each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence. Our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime. Nemology Science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created Nemology Science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. 
If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today. Know the name, know the person. Or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere, Florida. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine such as hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining rooms can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you visit, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic downtown Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, Old Florida cuisine at its best. Ozzy Escamilla is our special guest for this hour, www.tblnfilms.com is the website. We're talking about the Roswell Rods and X-Zone Nation. I saw video footage of these rods. There's no denying it, and I'll tell you something. As we progress this hour, <laughs> and you learn about the Roswell Rods, listen, I'm going to tell you something. I've seen videotape from all over the world. DVDs from all over the world, pictures from all over the world. But the one that has always stood out in my mind is the video footage that this gentleman, Jose Escamilla, sent me many years ago. And it's always a pleasure talking to you, my friend. Oh, same here. All right. So there you were. You were, you were tanning yourself, bronzing yourself for all the uh, little ladies <laughs> and all the groupies. <laughs> Which a normal rocker does. Now that that there's nothing wrong with that. I yeah. admi- I admire that. You know, like it's cool. You guys, you know, you 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 know, you pay your dues. You play hard. You work hard. And there exactly. you are, laying yeah. on your back, watching the UFOs in the sky. Yeah, you could see them, man. I mean, they were they were maybe about I guess about two or three thousand feet up high, <laughs> you know. And uh, man, that was cool. I mean. We just saw those, and I'll never forget that. I mean, it's been vivid in my mind ever since. Another UFO encounter I had was in 74. Uh, at that time, I had a karate school in Roswell called the Shotokan School of Karate. And um, I had driven to Rio Doso, New Mexico with my cousin. His, na- we, his name is Richard, and um, one of my girls, uh, her name was Karen. She's up from out of Arizona, and we were coming out of Rio Doso going back to Roswell, and it was about 10 in the morning, and a triangle ship, a silver metallic triangle ship, flew right over the highway in front of us, and it just hovered there. We pulled over and watched it. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I had an Insta camera, you know, uh, with us, but we didn't even think about photographing the doggone thing, man. It was just so incredible. And it just sat there, man, and then just took off. Boom, you know. Um, took off real fast towards Roswell, I guess, and then disappeared. And we went back into Roswell, and we told I told my karate class we saw this UFO, this triangle thing looking, you know, uh, coming out of Rio Doso. We told everybody, and then right. forgot about it, you know. And um, all those years, you know, th- there were other instances where we we would see things. Uh, uh, I remember when I was nine years old, out at Midway, New Mexico, we have a farm. And my dad called us all outside. And from our vantage point in those days, uh, we could see white sands from where we were. Mm -hmm. And white sands is like 200 miles away. But there was a break in the mountains, and you could see the white sands, you know. And the B-52 bombers used to take off from the base, which was two miles north of us. And they would take off, and then they would circle and fly right above our property. And they would circle again, and they would head towards white sands, and they would drop bombs on white sands, man. Right. It was, uh, you know, tests, I guess, they were doing. Mm-hmm. But we could see the explosions, the, you know, funnel-type clouds. It wasn't atomic bombs, 
But in, at, the, the, at that air base is the 409th Aero Squadron was located. These are the ones that bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan. So that that's where the bomb was, man. And that's also where the original Hangar 18 was, where they brought the aliens from the Roswell crash. And if you ever go to Roswell and meet me in Roswell, I'll take you to that doggone hangar. It's still there. And uh, we just kept having, you know, experiences and things. And uh, um, we had fireballs that we could see that were flying over White Sands, Mm -hmm. big green and yellow and orange fireballs. You could see them. And they must have been massive, man, because you could see them from our distance. If you stretch your hand out and you hold a quarter, that's how big they looked, you know. And I remember that when I was a kid. And, you know, I grew up over Roswell. And uh, um, in 1994, as I was mentioning, I had just finished editing this film called Wolf Ridge. It starred Wes Studi, who uh, played Geronimo in in the movie Geronimo and... uh, we had a, a premiere in Albuquerque and Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I decided to stay uh, in Roswell with my mom and my sister because I hadn't seen them in a few years. And on March 5th of 1994, my sister calls me, says, Jose, bring the video camera. There's UFOs out here. And so I I just said, ah, okay, you know, I really didn't take it serious. And uh, I took my time getting there. I got there at about 1 o'clock. They called me about 12.30. And uh, sure enough, man, there was uh, cigar ships, and there was hmm. uh, this one object that hovered there, man, for about a, a half hour. And I filmed it. And I filmed uh, 16 minutes of it because it, it took off at one time because it was a white jet that took off after it. And this thing, you know, just took off. And um, the the battery went dead. You know, but we could still see it there for about a half hour afterwards. I only filmed 16 minutes of footage. So I go back into Roswell. I was staying at my sister's house in, in Roswell, and um, I started looking at the footage frame by frame. And that was the first time that I saw rods. Now, the rod thing was pretty wild. I, I used to call them flying snakes because that's the way they were flying or swimming through the air, along with the UFOs that were appearing. I mean, there was this... Uh, uh, horseshoe looking thing and there was uh, man there was about 20 different types of UFOs that were filmed within that 16 minutes it was amazing you know and um, the first rods that I saw I you know I kept saying that's a bird that's a bug that's an insect yeah. you know you could hear me verbalize that because that's the way they look to me in the viewfinder but when I went frame by frame they were elongated and they didn't have wings they had an what appeared to be an undulatory wave fin on both sides of the torso, much like a cuttlefish. And you could see the insects, the insects' wings and, you know, mm-hmm. uh, birds. You could see their beaks and all that. But when these things flew by, they were long, man. They were like a flying snake, you know. And they were hauling, man. They were real super fast. So and uh, one of the things that I did, too, um, I didn't announce the rods until December of, of 1994. How come? The, well, uh, I had to do camera tests and making sure that I wasn't oh, I fooling see. myself, you know? Because somebody made a comment, oh, that's just an insect. And I go, well, I'm not going to release this to the public. Uh, we released the uh, Midway sightings to hard copy mm-hmm. mar- in March of 1994, and hard copy came out. They set up their cameras, and they caught rods, and they also caught birds and insects, and they caught UFOs. Right. So, uh, but I, I waited because, you know, I was just kind of a little bit skeptical myself until I started. I mean, we were filming with a, a lower shutter setting and I just said, you know, we're going to set up so we can get clarity of these things. And we set up uh, the sky fishing protocol and started filming at 2000 frames per second. And that was uh, the highest that camera could go at that time. It was an old RCA VHS camera. And that's where we started catching rods, and, and they were real clear. There was birds, there was bugs, there was rods, dragonflies. And um, I went on the air on uh, Christmas, uh, the week of Christmas uh, in 1994 on CBS, and I said, look, I'm asking everyone to go out there and film in your backyard since you're going to have the video camera filming uh, you know, Christmas and all that. Go in the backyard and set up the camera, and I told them how to shoot 
instead of the highest shutter setting, go into your manual and do all that. Mm -hmm. And let us know if there's rod activity in your location because uh, I want to find out if these things are appearing anywhere else. So I started getting results. I mean, we started getting footage from Mexico, from Texas, from Arizona, from California, Washington, Seattle, Washington. Um, and it just started compiling and compiling and compiling. And so I decided to produce a video in 95 called uh, Rod's Mysterious Objects Among Us. And uh, that was the first video. I've made three films about the rods. The first one, the second one was called The Smoking Gun Evidence because we had footage taken of rods at a place in Mexico, northern Mexico. There's a huge hole. Yeah. And it's called the Cave of the Swallows, Sotano de las Golondrinas. And in this cave, every morning at about 7.30, man, millions of swallows come out of, the, out of this uh, deep pit. The deep pit, you can fit the Empire State Building in there. That's how deep it is. And um, they come out in a vortex. And there's insects and there's other, you know, there's insects that fly around in there. But when the swallows start coming out, the insects disappear because, you know, the, the swallows eat insects, insects on yeah. the wing, man. I mean, that's how fast they are. But I've got footage of rods flying through the vortex of these thousands of swallows. I mean, you know, there's like three footers or five foot long rods that just fly through, man, effortlessly. And that was uh, some of the best footage. And the guy's name is Mark Lickley. He was a base jumper. And he didn't see them when they were base jumping into the cave. But when they saw the footage and I alerted them, they freaked out. You know, all the base okay. jumpers go, man, what the heck are these things, you know? And they have some. he had some of the most clear images. They were shot at high shutter settings and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it was just incredible. So the third video was called Just Rods and um, it was, you know, I had other footage that I had gotten, you know. Uh, there was footage in, by a cameraman in Sweden uh, that had filmed them using a high-speed camera. There was a military Tank. outpost, Tank. and they were testing tanks. What? Yeah. yeah, I remember that very well. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he, fil he was filming it for uh, the military, and, man, the rods that were flying in it were flying as slow as birds, you know? And, and there's tanks are firing this, these shells, and the rods are going after the shells. I mean, it's <laughs> just amazing footage. And I want to reprise that in the new film that I'm doing. And this, this kind of brings us to the, the film that I'm proposing to make this, this next year. Well, it's before, before we get to that, before we get to that, because okay. I've got about two minutes before my break, and I, I, want, I want this to be a whole segment that we do about your new film. What, okay. what is okay. the average size of a rod? We've estimated the length of them anywhere from i guess uh 18 inches up to 100 or more feet wow yeah we've got footage of them flying in and out of a tornado the funnel of a tornado 10 miles away these huge rods just entering the funnel i mean it's just amazing shot by a news helicopter and is, uh, is, is there any hypothesis on what these rods are no, and they do, they are pervasive enough to where they, I mean, they're appearing all over the world, yeah. Bob. I mean, we have footage of them from Japan. I just got footage from Japan, from China. From Mars? It's on Mars. We have them on Mars, Jeez. shot by the rover. I mean, and it's a rod. I mean, you yeah. can tell. And, and we have a, a variety of shots taken by the Mars rover. And um, there's animation of it because it, it was shooting you know, multitudes of uh, photos, and this rod just flies downward. And uh, you've also got video footage of rods going in and out of the atmosphere of Earth. Yeah, and underwater in and out of the oceans. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Listen, Jose, when we come back, I want you to tell our listeners about your new film. Oh, it's important. It's it is. Exo Nation, okay. Jose Escamilla is our special guest. www.tblfilms. Dot com. That's www.tblfilms.com. TBLN. I'm sorry, tblnfilms.com. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll be back on the other side of this break talking about this new film that he is putting together and how you can, uh, how you can participate. 
This is The Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. Once again, www.tblnfilms.com. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition, we'll weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Mutual Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. Gibbs A. Williams, Ph.D., is a practicing psychoanalyst, supervisor, researcher, and author in New York City. Much of his life has been dedicated to understanding nature and the uses of meaningful coincidences or synchronicities. His radical and original non-Jungian, non-mystical, non-magical theory of synchronicities illuminates much of the fog surrounding this challenging and perplexing topic. His ideas and manners are fresh, presented in a style that is both entertaining and highly informative. He is also an expert on crisis intervention, specially focused on violence reduction for the police and citizens, mastering anxiety, frustration, and stress without the use of medication, and effectively preventing and treating heroin addiction. Dr. Williams can be contacted at his email address at gwwilliamsny11 at aol.com or visit his website at Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Afterlife expert Roberta Grimes was the first one to say that dying can be fun. Now her best-selling book, The Fun of Dying, is available in stores worldwide. So if you wonder whether death ends life, how it feels to die, or what heaven might be like, The Fun of Dying was written for you. And if you have always been afraid of death, or if you worry that your life has no meaning, let The Fun of Dying ease your fears and bring new meaning to your life. Nothing said in The Fun of Dying is based on the teachings of any religion. Instead, Roberta draws on evidence to explain how death happens, how it feels, and what comes next. A lot of the best death-related evidence was produced in the first half of the 20th century. When it is put together with recent discoveries, it tells a consistent and amazing story. Roberta Grimes blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Closing us can be as our special guest, Exonation, www.tblnfilms.com. And Jose, with these rods being filmed on Mars, has NASA said anything? Absolutely not. 
they've uh, avoided me like the plague, man. Well. <laughs> they, you know, a, a good way to avoid anything is just to make no no comments, and they, yeah. they just uh, they're just not bothering. All right, tell us about your new film project. Okay, um, over the years, I've been researching rods now for twenty two years, and the reason being is because I've seen them with my own eyes. You know, um, I've had them fly right next to me, in front of me. I've had people with me, and they saw this rod just fly between us. I mean, the rod activity persists in Roswell and here in California. Um, I decided to finally make, well, first of all, I, I, I started uh, seeking out uh, high-definition footage of the rods. Mm -hmm. um, I have IMAX footage of rods in the fjords of Norway. And these are, I th you know, I think they're 4,000-foot-high cliffs yeah. in the fjords of Norway. And there's snow on there, and there's a helicopter filming this. And this is in an IMAX movie called Adrenaline Rush. Mm. And the base jumpers are at the edge. There's snow on the ground, and they're about to jump, and a rod flies right above their heads. A white rod just zips by super fast. And then there's about four other rods that fly down into the, the fjords, into the uh, river down there. And um, I said, man, you know, I'm going to make the final movie that proves that rods are real. Because I've been, I've been uh, blasphemized, man, by the networks. You know, History Channel, Why? Mon Monster Quest, they, tried, they came out and debunked the rods and kind of tried to make me look like a fool. And um, I got death threats over that because, you know, there's people that were following my rods activity. And they said, man, Monster Quest says they're nothing but insects. And I go, well, if you look at the Monster Quest episode carefully, you'll see that they tricked everybody. They tricked all their viewers. And on this website that I'm going to give the link to in a little while, I have an, uh, a video that I prepared that has Joe Rogan. You know who Joe Rogan is, right? Tell our listeners. He yeah, Joe Rogan is uh, one of the announcers from the UFC, Ultimate Fighting Championships. He's been on uh, X Factor and other other TV shows. He's a comedian. But um, I was at the uh, UFC um, Expo, and I approached him because I wanted to come on his podcast announcing that we had just received footage of a rod uh, filmed underwater. Okay, and it's a clear rod, man. You can't miss it. And uh, he says, oh, I know you. You're the guy with the rods. And I go, yeah. He says, well, you know what happened? He says, uh, he came out with this stuff. And he says, they were flying and all this. And he says, I was blown away. And then Monster Quest did a show. And guess what? They turned out to be nothing but insects. And, you know, and I said, but Joe, you know, he says, no, no, I want you to do this. I want you to get some mushrooms, dude. You know what I mean? He, made, he ridiculed me right yeah. in front of 250 people. So I said, you know what, fool? I'm going to go. I'm going to do this. I'm going to take that Monster Quest segment and put together how they fooled you, Joe Rogan, and all their viewing audience. And I have a, a, a film called Jose Escamilla versus Monster Quest. It's on the YouTube, and it's on this, uh, on this page that I'm going to give the website to in a little while. And what Monster Quest did is they cleverly filmed uh, – like paintballs and everything else, and they made them elongated blurs by shooting in a low shutter setting. I created the sky fishing protocol to shoot at the high shutter setting to eliminate blurring mm -hmm. of objects. And um, I want your listeners to go into this page and view, view the Monster Quest segment, but <clears throat> I finally have footage of rods shot by the highest resolution cameras in the world, especially IMAX. I mean, IMAX is massive, you know, high quality. And uh, it's not a blurred insect or a bird, you know, at the, at the top of these uh, snow-capped mountains. And we finally have footage shot with the Red Cam, which is um, 4K resolution, 24 frames per second, real 24 frames, not interlaced video, which is how Monster Quest tried to say these are nothing but insects flying that are in interlaced video and low shutter setting. And uh, we finally have a rod shot at high speed, man, at 2,000 frames per second. And when you do that sucker in slow motion, you can see it's a rod, man. It's not an insect. It's not a bird. 
and uh, it's clear. I mean, the clarity is impeccable. I also have uh, footage of them taken by a gentleman in um, in Washington D.C. His name is Wilbur Allen. Yes, Wilbur Allen. He's been on the show a number of times. He's a great oh, guy. He's going to be in my film, and he's uh, he's been filming rods right over the no-fly zone of Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. in high resolution, high speed. Yeah. Using the same cameras that NASA uses on the on the International Space Station, plus some other cameras that he's purchased, that uh, uh, the clarity of these things is just amazing, Rob. Yeah, and um, he's going to be in the film. I also have a gentleman in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, named Sean Gutro, who's been filming rods using infrared filters on his cameras, where you can film in the infrared spectrum, which is invisible to the naked eye. And he's been capturing squadrons along with Wilbur. They've both been capturing squadrons of these things. And, man, the footage that I've got from these people are just, is just amazing. We now also have drone footage. You know these drones? Yeah. 4K resolution, high resolution, high speed. And we've got footage. And your, your listeners can view this on my crowdfunding website. And the reason I'm making this film, it's going to be called Skyfish Dash, The Discovery of the Rods, is because I'm going to take everyone in this movie from the beginning times of my experiences uh, to the present. We're going to go to all the locations where rod activity persists, where it's guaranteed we're going to catch rods, but we're going to this time have the ultimate camera array and, and, and this uh, uh, drone so we can catch them up in the air. And um, the name of the film is called Skyfish, The Discovery of the Rods. And I want your viewer, I mean, your listeners to go to the new website. It's www.skyfishrods.com. That's skyfishrods, R-O-D-S, dot com. And the top video there is the video where you see me and I'm telling people, look, the reason I've been doing this, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And I kind of explain what I have. You know, we have... Uh, rewards for people baseball hats we have a camera kit so they can go out and do their own sky fishing uh t-shirts and uh, you know the rewards are going to be cool but and i want people to join us in exploring and presenting this incredible event this incredible phenomena to the world you know and become a part of it and the film is going to be an awesome movie and we're trying to raise two hundred sixty five thousand dollars because we need that kind of money in order to get the most incredible equipment to take to all these locations. Sure. So um, uh, that's that's what's coming up. And uh, if your people can go in, and look at the website, skyfishrods.com, and look at the videos. I mean, check out the presentations of everything. You'll see what's been happening with the rod activity for the past 22 years. I also have footage of them taken by NASA um, that's going to be included where rods are leaving Earth, going into space. And we also have shuttle footage where rods are coming into Earth from outer space. And as you mentioned earlier, we now have them on Mars. I mean, this, this footage of Mars is incredible, Rob. You know, Jose, uh, I, I remember you years ago showing me this footage, as I said earlier. And for people not to see it and not believe it, but to try and debunk it, just shows how ignorant and naive people are yeah well you know a lot of the viewers that, uh, that watched uh, monster quest and mm -hmm. all these other networks that uh, have tried to debunk, debunk me um they don't realize the camera uh, the way the cameras work you know they have these guys presenting these uh, uh paintballs man and yeah. you know they have to shoot at a low shutter setting and i keep telling people don't shoot at low shutter setting shoot at high shutter setting and then uh, the Monster Quest people purposefully got a high-speed camera mm -hmm. and a regular VHS camera or a regular camera, and they tried to do a test at a hummingbird place because they say, well, the closest thing that we feel is to a rod is a hummingbird, so we're going to go out to this bird place and uh, set up the high-speed camera and try to film rods in broad daylight. Well, they said that the hummingbirds did not show up so that was the excuse they used to not do the broad daylight tests, camera tests. 
And if they would have contacted me, I would have told them, set up a camera at the high shutter setting and shoot in broad daylight. I said, don't shoot at night because that compromises the camera. You have to bring the shutter setting low in order to get enough light into the camera. Mm -hmm. But that's mm -hmm. what they did. All right. The high speed camera captured moths and then the camcorder captured moths, but at low shutter setting, which is elongated. All right. They purposefully did that. By avoiding the broad daylight testing, and why, um, that's why, where a lot of people go. They're just insects. No, they're not. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but why did Monster Quest do this? To debunk me. Why? Well, they don't want the truth out there. And yet, I, I've seen Monster Quest. It's anything but the truth. It's well, what, some it's, of it's it one is, of these. You know, it's one of these so-called reality TV shows that are nothing else but a bunch of garbage. There's no reality in half these shows. It's all bunk. Yeah, and um, but you know they're going to be. Uh, I'm, I'm going to show the public how they did it. I've shown it on that video. Who's mm -hmm. asking me versus Monster Quest, and uh, you know it just makes fools out of people and keeps people in in the in the dark. Keeps people stupid, you know. So uh, this movie that I'm doing is going to be highest resolution ever captured footage of rods, and uh, when you go to the skyfishrods.com website. Uh, hit the top video and look at that, and you'll see what I'm talking about. There's some incredible footage there that Wilbur Allen um, submitted. That's, I mean, he's got some of the most incredible footage of rods, Rob. Yeah, I know. I've, I've seen them. I, I've seen them, and uh, he's got some. He's got some great footage of other anomalies in the oh. sky over Washington in oh, restricted yeah, airspace. Man. Yeah, he's been capturing UFOs and orbs and. All sorts of phenomena up there, man. And, and uh, he's one of the top uh, filmmakers, as far as I'm concerned, investigators of unknown phenomena. And he's got the camera equipment that it takes mm -hmm. to do it right, scientifically. So, and I can't wait to meet him because I'm going to fly to Washington, D.C. once we've got budget. Right. And I'm going to sit with him for about a week and I'm going to interview him. And we're just going to share, you know, the knowledge that we have on, on uh the UFOs that he's captured and the rods and other things that are flying up above uh, Washington. So I can't wait to meet the man. I, I've been, I've known him for, God, since 2000, 2001. Wow. That's when we first connected. But I never met him personally. This was all just through the Internet. Hey, tell me, has there ever been a rod seen on the moon? Yes, we have, uh, we have some uh, footage that was taken by Apollo 8. <laughs> on a film camera. So, uh, you know, I'm going to include that. I, I have a lot of footage of the rods, man. It's just going to blow yeah. people's away, man. You know, anytime you have a rod flying in a scene and it flies behind the Washington monument. Okay. During Obama's inauguration. Okay. There were two yeah. rods that flew behind the wash behind the Washington monument. That is not an insect close to the lens. Okay. And that's not a bird. And these were long rods, man. They must have been about 20 footers. And they went behind the Washington Monument a far distance away from where the camera was. Hmm. Hey, hey, Jose, we've got to take our final break. Please stand by, Exo Nation. Hey. Two hmm. websites for you. Go to www.skyfishrods.com. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 
401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. What Happened in Benghazi is revealed by Nicholas Genix, author of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. He informs the American people that President Obama deceived them by advocating a strong foreign policy prior to the 2012 presidential election, and Hillary Clinton supported this deception. As the title infers, there is a connection between Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. Ample evidence informs Americans that Obama's early indoctrination in the Quran developed an infinity for Islam, why the Quran is the source of discontent in many countries, and why the Obama foreign policy deception led to poor military action and caused the loss of American lives in Benghazi. Genix provides 36 questions for the Select Committee on Benghazi to validate if Americans are justified to mistrust President Obama and Hillary Clinton. An overview of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi is presented on the website www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. You're listening to the X Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. <laughs> www. All right, you've got your pencils up, and I've got your attention, don't I? www.skyfishrods.com. That's www.skyfishrods.com is the website that I want each and every one of you to go to after tonight's show. And then I want you to put it on Facebook to all your friends. Get it through the social media networks. We need to make this happen, Exxon Nation. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And Exxon Nation, you have never been part of a problem before. The website, www.skyfishrods.com. Jose, once again, tell our listeners why this film is so important. Well, first of all, um, the flight of these things. I mean, we don't know where they come from. We really don't know. Uh, we we have uh, rock carvings and petroglyphs from over a thousand years ago, so natives must have seen these things, you know, way back when. Um, mm -hmm. We don't know what they're doing here. We don't know what their purpose is. Uh, we don't know if they're harmful to us. We don't know if they're good good for us. 
but well, they're just everywhere. They're appearing everywhere, man, and it's, it's just, it's a mystery. But if they've it's, been here for over a thousand years and so far, the, uh, the, the way I understand, there's no, there's no proof that they have ever done any harm to, to us humans. I often wonder if we, out of our sheer negligence about the way we treat the earth and the environment and everything else, if we humans have actually caused harm to the rods. Yeah, I mean, uh, I do have um, footage that just came in last week. It's about a F-14 pilot, okay? And he's radioing in to the uh, to the station, and he's saying, uh, "Guys, I just saw something that's just totally incredible." He says, um, "I don't know what it was." He says, uh, "I don't think it. I, I don't think it was a bird." He says, I, uh, "It appeared to me, and I'm not kidding." He says, "Like a rod." <laughs> so this is a pilot mm-hmm. that says this thing flew right by his jet, and he says, "I'm not kidding. It looked like a rod." So. Um, there are people out there that are seeing these things. There are, uh, uh, I have a lot of eyewitnesses that have experienced seeing them. And I had one scientist tell me that, um, uh, their metabolism is so high because they're traveling so fast and they don't seem to slow down. I mean, I, I've never seen any, anything of uh, a rod, you know, stopping in mid flight, but, uh, they said they could they could have a cure for a lot of pain, you know, illnesses that we mm-hmm. have. You know, they, they, their metabolism is so high. Uh, pharmaceuticals are going to go crazy over them if we ever catch one, and it cures every illness that we have in the world. You never know. Yeah, I mean, you, n- you never know. But has there ever been an attempt by a rod, based on the information that you've been privy to over the years, Jose, where, where they've actually tried to communicate with humans? I... Let me see. What was the? Well, you know, there, there's there's a, a an instance where this one rod flew right at one of the base jumpers and it missed him. I mean, it just made a U turn. So I don't know if he's trying to communicate with him that way. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a gentleman named Adrian Valera, who is going to be also in the film. He's a one of the co-producers in my film, and he's been. Um, sending telepathic communication to them, asking them to come in. And he's had great success. They come in. I mean, they they fly around. So I, I captured a rod at his house uh, with this drone that I bought. I mean, it, it's just amazing. So, And he uses crystals and things. So I don't know. Maybe there's a, an affinity towards, towards, uh, towards crystals mm-hmm. or adrenaline. I mean... You know, I've got footage taken in Russia of uh, rods at 15,000 feet zipping around parachutists, you know. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, it's just amazing. These things, we just don't know what they're doing here, but they are here. And they have kind of a, um, a liking towards humans. You know, they have. I don't see them attacking anyone. They've, uh, they've been, they just... I think they're attracted to adrenaline, man. Maybe that's what makes them go towards these base jumpers at the Cave of the Swallows. I don't know, you know, maybe or the parachutes. Maybe it's just know? sheer curiosity. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Is I is mean, there a uh, best time of the day to try and 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 capture the uh, the rods on film? Uh, all day long. I I urge people do not shoot at night. Mm-hmm. Because that compromises the quality of the imagery, and you have to put the lowest shutter setting on your camera, and that's just it's just no good. Shoot in broad daylight, set it at the highest shutter setting possible that you have on your cameras. I think they're up to fifteen thousand, you know, frames, so uh, the clarity is impeccable. So um, anytime, I mean, I used to capture them at seven o'clock in the morning over at Midway. You know, when the sun was coming up, boom, there'd be rod activity, you know. Hmm. And I don't know where they went, Rob. You know, they'd fly towards us, right above us at the property, and then they'd just be gone, you know. We just don't know where they went. You know, where did they hang out? Yeah. I mean, and then I have footage, too, uh, where it appears they're coming in from from out of nowhere, like an interdimensional situation. Wilbur Allen has rods coming out of nowhere. 
and going into nowhere. So we just don't know what their capabilities are. But because they, they're able to travel so fast, maybe it looks like they come in from deep space and boom, they fly in, boom, and they're back in outer space. But, you know, well, maybe that's how you But know. what does that tell us about their physiology where they can come in from outer space to this atmosphere that we're in? They go underwater. It seems that they can instantaneously adapt to any environment. Yeah, they have the capabilities of, uh, I mean, uh, one of the things that I, I I repeat all the time is they don't fly through the air, they swim. So they're using the atmosphere mm-hmm. as as uh, fish use water, you know. But in outer space, there is no atmosphere. I know. There's no atmosphere on Mars. There's no it's, atmosphere on it, the moon. I know. We just don't know what their nature is. We don't know what their nature is, and we're trying to get scientists involved. Um, we're, uh, Miko PQ, is that his name? Pichu, 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 Pichu yeah. Yeah, uh, we're contacting him. We want to have him on the show, and we're going to turn him into the rods. Um, we have a, a gentleman, the the foremost entomologist in the world. I mean, if you want to know about insects, this is the man you talk to. And what's his opinion on the rods? Well, he says, uh, he's in the Monster Quest episode, and he says, look, these things are not insects. He says, these things are, uh, they're, they're, they don't have wings. They're, they're undulating in this fashion. He says, insects, I mean, he shows you how insects fly. Mm-hmm. And he built, check this out, he, uh, he built and commissioned the University of Exeter in London. He commissioned them to build what he felt is the prehistoric ancestor of all insects. And uh, this thing he created, he climbs up the ladder and he shoves it out and it glides. And guess what it looks like? A rod. It looks like a rod, man. Now, here's a curious thing. The Big Bang of Evolution had what? Happened, what, 500 million years ago? And then 300 million years ago, Insects just popped up from out of nowhere. We don't know where they come from, what have you. And um, there was a fish in the ocean called Animalacaris, and it was the top predator in the food chain back, you know, 350 million years ago. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. there have been a few fossils found it, but its body and shape is just like a rod, okay? And for all we know, maybe these things found a way to start emerging out of the oceans, you know, coming out, and then finally they flew out of the ocean, possibly, if that's what they are, you know. Um, there's a lot of theoretical stuff, but mm-hmm. uh, Dr. John Wooten, no, Robin Wooten, the guy that uh, made the uh, the model of the prehistoric ancestor of all insects, and, you know, I thought when he's saying, I've, I've got the commission, uh, a commission to build a... Uh, a model of what I feel is the prehistoric ancestor of all insects. I was sure he's going to show an in, uh, a dragonfly right. type of thing, but no, it's this thing that looks like a rod. And you can see that. I want your listeners to go over to the Monster Quest uh, segment, which is at the bottom of the page on skyfishrods.com, and uh, you'll see what I mean, man. He, uh, this thing looks like a rod. Wow, it's just amazing. So you know, there's a lot of endless possibilities. And uh, we're going to get as many scientists involved. We're going to pay them a good amount of money each. You know, this is why we need the budget. Sure. Uh, $265,000. I've got rewards up there for everyone. And, and you know, we've got baseball hats. Uh, we've got the official hat for the Skyfish film. Uh, we've got even a camera kit. That's the Skyfishing kit that you can check out and you can, you know, get pretty cheap and everything else. So, uh I just want all your viewers to go in there, and if you can contribute, please do. If not, as Rob's told you, share it on your Facebook, you know, or, or uh, spread the word. You just got to get word. the word Instagram, out there. Instagram, Twitter, yeah. you know, uh, we need as many people to view this uh, so that we can get this film done once and for all. And if anything, we already have the proof that these things are real. Okay, so what I've already done is I've already proven that there's an unidentified flying object among us. A living one. 
A living one, yes. Yeah. And we've proven it with this film. Jose, you and I must say so long for now. Keep us in the loop. We'll have you back on in a couple of weeks. Let us know how it's going. And uh, as always, my friend, great talking to you, Exxon Nation. Here's the website I want you all to go see. And I want you all to share with as many people as you can. Plaster it throughout social media, skyfishrods.com. That's www.skyfishrods.com. I'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center where? In Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away.